Greetings, family. Aquini, which in our language is peace be unto you. Two Hawks, Pamiam Sachem, and Mashi Pagnayansa Tribe, Director General for the Federation of Aboriginal Nations of America. We're here at the actual seat of the Massasoit, very sacred land for the Poconope people. And this is sort of a key sort of location for the history of this thing that we've come to know as the United States. This is the uh, place right here where the Massasoit would sit, and from what I understand, his, uh, his bride would sit there. And this is where he would govern his territory. And in Poconoke lands, at the time of uh, colonial contact, ranged throughout much of Massachusetts, this part of Rhode Island, up into New Hampshire, Vermont, Maine, and parts of New York as well, and parts of Connecticut. So from this seat right here, where I'm touching, we have the honor to touch, and the privilege, this is where he oversaw that vast, vast domain of Poconoke territory. Um, additionally, this is the place where word was brought to him that some newcomers had landed on the shores. I'm sure you've all heard of Plymouth Rock and all of that good stuff. Landed on the shores, I believe, in the wintertime and were watched by the Poconoke warriors for a while. And this is where he made the final decision that he would help them. And I know that there's been a lot of conversation and jokes. You hear it a lot of times. Well, you know, you should have just sent them back or you should have just let them die. And to me, that's that's not really who being a leader. I mean, a real honest to goodness leader would see individuals that you don't know, but that are in, in need of help and just let them die. You know, it, it, that's not what leaders do. And regardless of what happened after, you cannot knock a leader for doing what a leader should do. And that's helping when he saw that there was a need for help. So from this seat is where he decided to help the pilgrims. It was from this seat that he sent forward to have the first Thanksgiving with the pilgrims because that story's gotten messed up as well. It was not the pilgrims who had Thanksgiving with the Poconokets. It was the Poconokets who had Thanksgiving with the pilgrims because once again, the pilgrims were immigrants to this land. They didn't know how to farm. They didn't know how to fish. They didn't know how to hunt in these lands. So what were they going to bring to the Poconoket or to any of the Indians? It was the Indians who shared with them, not the other way around, and showed them the rich bounty of these lands and how to take advantage of them, how to benefit from them, and how to do it in a way that was sustainable and respectful. It was also from this seat where he decided to sign the first peace treaty with the English, which is what gave them the opportunity to be in these lands lawfully. That first peace treaty is from this place right here. So as we stand, every English descendant who ties back to the Mayflower and all of that, that history that's so celebrated by our European brothers and sisters, this is that point where y'all were given that permission to be here, right at this seat. We know that as time progressed, the kindness was not returned and eventually things became very adversarial and after the Massasoit was no longer here. King Philip, Poe Medicom, apologies, Poe Medicom, not King Philip. That's what the European called him. He was Poe Medicom. This is where he decided that he would wage the King Philip's war from. This city, and that his people's respect was more important than any friendship treaty that had been signed between the European and his people. And it was ultimately from this land and in this place that he returned to once the King Philip's war had taken a downturn to reconnect with his ancestors and to make peace. And on the other side of this hill, this mountain here, a little bit further down, we don't really talk too much about the specific sites, is where he was beheaded, quartered, and parts of his remains were left there to be desecrated by the animals and, and, and the nature that was around. And the quarters were sent off to the different parts of the colonies to be a reminder to our people to never try something like that again. So when we talk about this name Poconoket, it's a very important name because Poconoket is who these people were and are today. And they were forced to take on the name Wampanoag because if you were found to be a Poconoket male age 14 or older, they would shoot you dead on sight. And it was a very bad time for our people in these lands. They were changing our names, taking away our lands from us, eventually reclassifying us when they realized that they didn't get the proper treaties, that you can't just kill people and take their land, that you have to have some sort of formal agreement that says that they surrender 
and that are, these lands are yours to be taken over. They didn't get any of that here in these lands. So they just changed this all to Negroes. And a Negro, from my understanding, is, was the Portuguese word for a slave. So it didn't even have anything necessarily to do with place of origin, but it was more, you're a slave. And by taking on that title and by changing our classifications to that title of a slave, but we're no longer Aborigines or Indians or whatever those terms they made up for us. We're no longer Poconokets or Nahigansets or any of the people that we were were what they call us. And because we're what they call us, they can treat us the way that they want to treat us.